Hello, and welcome to today's webinar, Refresher Workshop for Returnees. Today's presentation will be recorded and sent out to all registered participants and also will be posted on the Hub. As this is a workshop, we welcome your participation and interaction. We will have a Q&A portion throughout the presentation. You can type your questions into the question box on the webinar doc, or you are welcome to raise your hand to ask a question verbally. We are excited to share this time with you today. Now on to Haley with Textile Exchange. Haley? Hi, Ray. Uh, thanks, Rose, and hi, everyone. A warm welcome, and thank you very much for joining us today. Um, as Rose mentioned, this is the Getting Started webinars for returnees. This is actually the last of our five webinars that we've held this week. So if you did miss the previous ones, those recordings will be made available. Before we start, I just wanted to uh, celebrate and let you all know that finally our Insights report was launched this week. So a huge thank you to everybody. These insights are really only possible due to your commitment, your contributions, and your efforts. And a huge thank you to everybody at Textile Exchange who worked on getting this report out. So if you haven't uh, had a chance to do so already, please do take a look and please do share within your network. Again, we just want to sort of thank you all and take a time to pause and congratulate the class of 2021. Hopefully you see your name uh, among the distinguished list um, and thank you all for stepping up to be part of this journey. Just to note that last year really did mark our largest ever participation, uh, representing over 292 companies, and we have the ambition to grow further. So hopefully one day this will be the class of 2023 and the MCI 500. Here is what we plan to cover in the 90 minutes. Um, as Rose mentioned, it is very much a workshop. We really want to make it as practical as possible. Um, so please do raise your hand and ask questions along the way. We have set this up to try and provide as many answers as possible, but we also will give enough time at the end for all of your questions. So here are the team. So I'm sure these are some names you are familiar with. Um, so joining the call today, we have Liesl. Uh, we also have Jesse, and then the other uh, members of the team are Prina, Madeline, and Marissa. I'll hand over to Jesse and Liesl just to say a quick hi and introduce themselves. Hi, everybody. Uh, I'm Jessica, the program manager of the Benchmark. It's a pleasure to be here with you today. Thank you so much for joining us. As Heli said, this is a practical workshop, so we want to hear from you. Please ask questions. We want to address all the questions that you, you might have. Um, and yeah, late, later I'm going to uh, walk you through a live demo. Uh, so you will hear from me in a few minutes. Thank you so much. You're on mute, Lisa. Here we go. Unmuting always the first step. Hi, everybody. You won't hear so much from me today, especially if I stay on mute. Um, I've just joined to support Haley and, and Jessica with the, uh, the back end, if you like, of the program. So I'm the director of the benchmarking program, and I'll be on the Q&A button. So I'll be um, available to answer questions real time. So nice to, nice to be here listening in. Thank you, Liesl. And I don't think I introduced myself. So for those who don't know, I'm Hayley. I'm the Corporate Benchmark Senior Manager. I joined uh, the team last September. So I'm sure I've had interaction with many of you, but for those who I haven't met, again, hello and welcome. So we just wanted to provide a very quick recap of why we're all here. Um, we, the Material Change Index really is the largest peer-to-peer -peer comparison initiative in the fashion and textile industry. It tracks the sector's progress towards more sustainable sourcing, as well as the alignment of SDGs and that transition, the much needed transition to the circular economy. As returnees, you probably are already aware and hopefully have experienced some of the benefits of benchmarking, but we just wanted to quickly recap sort of why we're here and why we continue to do what we do. So benchmarks really do help uh, clarify what is expected from the industry and the company. 
Um, they clarify how companies can contribute to sustainability. They often promote a race to the top. So everybody wins just by taking part. They help to track progress and they really are that engagement tool. This slide is just to show that we really are not alone in our journey and what we're trying to achieve. There are a number of other important frameworks, uh, guidance, data alignment and disclosures and reporting, and that all sort of form part of our benchmarking ecosystem. If we look at our own uh, benchmarking ecosystem, we have obviously the material change index. Um, the challenges now have been really embedded into our survey. We have our public facing tools, so our impact dashboard and leaderboard, and these will be covered a little bit more in detail. And this year, um, a key part of our ecosystem, we're really thrilled to announce the uh, partnership with the Fashion Pact. So this year, uh, we will be the reporting partners for the Fashion Pact. Um, it is really a great step forward in the industry collaboration, and we did come together with that shared vision of how to make uh, reporting easier for companies who are committed to achieving um, ambitious goals. So we're really excited to be embarking on that reporting journey with the Fashion Pack this year. So the next uh, couple of slides, we're just going to go over the MCI. So as you may know, last year marked the end of a three year cycle and every three years we do carry out a full sort of systematic strategic review of the programme to make sure it's future fit. So just on the next slide, this is probably the framework that you are familiar with. Um, so there are the three pillars, so the strategy, materials, portfolio, circularity and then biodiversity being its own standalone pillar or part of the benchmark. We have worked over the last few months to really evolve um, the framework, evolve the thinking and have put together a slightly revised and updated version of the benchmark framework, which we'll show on the next slide. Here, as you can see, it looks slightly different. I think there are key things to sort of highlight here. There are obviously now three sections, which are section one, which is business integration. The second section, materials portfolio, and then a new section three with the impact modules. As you can see with the biodiversity boxes, they are now fully integrated uh, into the full survey. Um, and this integration really is a build on what the Fashion Pack and CFMB have been doing over the past 12 months. In addition, you will notice there are additional impact modules in section three. Um, this covers climate and oceans for the Fashion Pack reporting along with biodiversity and the materials impact. All of these are mandatory for the fashion pack, but they're also optional for anyone else who wants to take part and use them as a benchmark this year. Just as a quick reminder, there are different ways that you as a company can interact with the benchmark. And there are three benchmark options. There is the full MCI. So this means you will qualify for the material change index. There is the modular, which is the partial assessment. So this was where companies are completing one or more materials and receive an index placement for those uh, modules that they complete. And finally is the material tracker. The tracker is just to note the mandatory requirement um, and sort of the minimum requirement if you were to take part in any of the challenges. So just to, uh, highlight and highlight the success of our challenges um, as many of you may already be signatories um, but if you are not please do reach out if you would like to learn more information but reporting via the benchmark is uh, easy and made easy and sort of simple now and it's fully integrated so this year we will continue to use um, and collaborate with our platform provider 73 bit so it will be the pro bench, and uh, this is where we enter into our live demonstration. So please bear with us and over to Jesse. Thank you so much, Haley, for this great overview. Um, as you can see, there's a, a few changes in the framework. Um, and the main goal is also is basically to help you to navigate better on, on the survey. 
I'm going to uh, change uh, the screen and I'm going to jump into ProBench. Uh, since you are virginies, all of you know very well this platform. I'm going to turn off my camera so you can focus on, on ProBench. So um, this is ProBench. Uh, as Haley mentioned, is a very secure platform run by 73Bit. We have been working with them uh, for years. Other organizations, well-known organizations, also benefit from 73Bit uh, tech uh, technology. So here is how it looks like. As you can see, it's, uh, it's exactly the same than last year. You will find it here in this part, uh, the key links, the key uh, dates about when you need to submit your survey. On the right part, you will find the library, resource library. We have been updating uh, the links, uh, the guides. And also here, you will find the company and sector uh, reports. So here you will find also the links to uh, the materials change index tools as a way also uh, to help you to connect uh, uh, what are the results that you are getting by uh, submitting this survey? What are the, the tools um, that you are getting? Uh, similar to last year, you will find your survey uh, here uh, under service and scorecards. Uh, if it's new, uh, when you, before open the survey, sorry, you will find it under the new tab. We have already opened the survey to show you uh, this survey in, the, in this live demo. So I'm going to click here, uh, hopefully it works and you can see the, the survey. So that's how it looks like. So I'm going to walk you through uh, some of the key areas of the survey, uh, mainly to try to address uh, some of the questions that we have already been getting uh, and also based on some uh, stakeholder consultation that we have made. As you are regionies, uh, you already got your password, but maybe there's someone uh, new in your team that you want to also give them access. So for that, uh, you will find that in the Q&A, uh, in you know, the FAQ guide, sorry, uh, you need to share your company code. In case you have, you forgot your company code, no worry at all. You can just email us to cfmb at textileexchange.org. So once you are in your portal, uh, that's how it's going to look like this year's survey. On the left side, you will find key icons that uh, to navigate similar to last year on the top, the, the, the clock where you can see how you're progressing your survey and same as we saw before resource library, company and sector reports. One key benefit uh, of being uh, a regionally, uh, and also being, of course, submitted your survey last year, is that pre-fill will be uh, in this year's survey. Even if it doesn't look like that right now, you will see how it works. So similar to last year, uh, you need to start completing your survey from top to down. The mandatory questions, uh, you will find three sections that are same than last year, but they have been grouped in this section mandatory question because you must complete them to uh, move on on your survey. I'm going to start with terms uh, and policies. And here there is a, um, a, a, an update. As you can see here, we are asking if you have fashion pack symmetry. As Haley said, we have this partnership with the Fashion Pact. So if you are Fashion Pact signatory here, you need to tick yes. And then uh, save and continue. Save and continue is very important for all the sections because if you don't do that, uh, your answers won't be uh, saved. In this case, for this uh, short live demo, I'm going to uh, click no because I want to show you how the um, sorry, and this is mandatory, as you can see, that's a very good example, because you need to agree with the CFM pro, uh, CFMB program terms of use and data privacy policy. And this is optional if you want to receive more information. So that's how it looks like. Um, those are the benchmark options, uh, as we saw before. So we have the MCR, the modular and the tracker. There is two elements that are common to these three uh, options which are the materials balance sheet. So our MBS uh, that then later Haley is going to show us how it works. So this is the core uh, of the framework, uh, the materials balance sheet. That is a section where we ask you for your uptake volumes of the fibers used. And then the other common element, uh, which is new in this year's framework 
is the impact modules that you can see here. Those are optional for all the non-fashion pack symmetry, so for all MCI, as these three options here, except gold module, which is optional uh, for both, for fashion pack signatures and um, also for MCI. So as an example, uh, I'm going to select MCI full survey, uh, which is uh, uh, basically you need to complete your full survey as we saw in the previous framework. Um, just quick, I'm going to walk you through modular. So modular uh, means that you can partially complete your survey. And we have these uh, three uh, options that you can integrate in this uh, modular option. In these three, you can uh, select from one uh, to two out of the three. And finally, we have the material tracker. And the material tracker is uh, where you report your uptake volumes. And that's the minimum requirement also for all our challenges, both the cotton challenge and the ARPA challenge. As I said before, let's select MCI. I'm going to select all the impact models so you can get an idea how it works. Um, here, I'm going to select no. And let's move to the next uh, section. Just I'm going to select here some of the options so you can see how it looks like. And then again, let's save and continue. Then we move to the uh, third section, which is mandatory, which is the company profile. As you can see, I click here on the left overview, and that gives you a very nice, a very nice, well, a full overview of what are the sections that you need to complete. So here now, by selecting MCI in the benchmark option, all the section has been unlocked. And those are the sections that you must complete to submit your survey. I'm just going to quickly go here in company profile because we got uh, several times a question that uh, we think is important, that, uh, uh, to, that we think is important to clarify. This one, company description. As you know, by completing the MCI, uh, you are eligible uh, to participate in our leaderboard, which is one of our MCI uh, tool, which is in the public domain. In that MCI tool in the leaderboard, you will find a progress card that basically uh, is an overview uh, of uh, your, how you are doing, uh, how your company is doing. And we ask you to complete this short description that will be added in that progress card. Also, just to mention that this year, we are adding a question on the leaderboard because it's not mandatory. You can uh, opt in or opt out of the leaderboard. Now uh, that we have completed these sections here, um, I'm going to move into the materials balance sheet. But just quickly before, I realized that it's very important uh, to mention what are the different tools that we have here, uh, different guidance that we have, because we have the guidance here on the library, but also we have the guidance embedded in ProBench. So here on the top, as you can see, you can click and you can, you will find the guidance, uh, the guidance will display with all the information, well, with the key information that you need uh, to fill out the survey. Also uh, a very useful uh, and handy um, element is this question mark that we have here, where you will find why this is important. And then uh, for some of the terms, like key terms, that you uh, might want to know what that means, uh, you will find hovers, like for example, this one, what means full-time equivalence. So just you need to hover it and you will find the definitions. Said that, now I think it's time to uh, jump into the materials balance sheet, since we know that it's one of the most tricky sections of the benchmark. And now it's time for Haley to come back to with us, and she's going to walk us uh, briefly through the MBS. Thank you, Jesse. So, um, as you well, as we may have said, the MBS is actually sort of the the module that runs through all of the, the benchmark options, so it really is the key um, to the survey. Um, we are just going to do a very quick demonstration just using cotton. So if you could just unselect wool, Jesse, just using cotton as the example. Um, just something again to stress is we, it may have a different look and feel, but what we are asking is the same. I just wanted to sort of go through and reassure you um, that we are asking for the same information, but we sort of condensed it to make it a hopefully a more user friendly experience. So if we go into the balance sheet now, so as Jesse's going to hit save and continue. So dependent on what 
fibers and materials you select on that previous sheet, it will unlock each of the different uh, fiber sheets. So we've selected cotton. So here is the, the cotton sheet. Um, as Jesse mentioned, at the top, there is the guidance notes um, to click down. And that contains obviously all of the information relevant to cotton and that might be needed for the question. As a returnee, you may think this looks very different to last year, but as I said, it, we are asking for exactly the same information. So the cotton portfolio, so all of the programs still run along the left hand column. So if you do use one of those in, in your portfolio, all you need to do is obviously select used for, for any that are all applicable. Then you will move over to your uptake data and here's slightly different. You just need to click on that blue icon as Jesse just done. Again, select it, select the product. Enter the volume if you know it. Then the unit. So again, it's kilogram metric tons and pounds in the US. The reporting tier that that relates to. And as you will see, as with last year, the conversion rates are automatically populated. Once you've done that, it's really important to actually click done and it will take you back to the main screen. Then the next step is to complete the verification information. So again, you need to click on the blue icon, select which verification is used, then the coverage again the options are exactly the same as last year and then the product label again select done when is all entered and just to know um when you have entered in the verification information you'll see a one will be populated um in that column that just simply indicates that you have entered information into that into that section. Another important sort of uh, aspect of the balance sheet is to make sure it's complete. So just say we used uh, better cotton, uh, so BCI, but we didn't know the exact volume that we were using. Here, it, it, if possible, we really request that you provide the estimate share. So once you've put in the number, again, as you can see, it populates the data. So again, save and continue. And Jesse, if you just go back to the main screen. It, and just to, again, as we said, there have been some changes in the framework. So we are, this is essentially the accounting for all of your materials that you use. So we strongly recommend you select all of the materials that you, you use. If you don't have the complete data, as I said, you can enter estimates. And this year we um, are also asking for the recycled details within the MBS. This is a slight change from last year, um, but all of these will uh, show dependent on what you select in BS1. If you aren't seeing um, an option, just go back to BS1 and make sure you select it and then it will um, show in the material balance sheet. I will, oh, I see two questions yeah i'm oh. typing answers oh. as you speak, <laughs> sorry i just saw it pop up um, i'll let Lisa answer the questions um I, but I, I think i might put it might be a good time to pause because i i appreciate it is a lot to take in um and i guess are there any immediate questions about the material balance sheet the new look and feel anything that you would like us to maybe go over again or is it all clear Shall I take silence that everyone's <laughs> still with us? <laughs> okay. Maybe we can continue oh. and we can cover all the questions uh, at the end because for the moment I don't see any more questions. I think Lisa has already answered <laughs> all of them. Thank Perfect. you so much, Lisa. Perfect. And then I think back to you, Jesse, for the important bit. So once you have taken the time to go through all of the relevant modules and answered the questions, there is a, an important bit at the end. So back to you, Jesse. 
Thank you so much, Hayley, for this clear overview of the MBS. Uh, as we mentioned at the beginning, we are going to run drop-in clinics uh, during over July and August, and we are going to address uh, specific questions on uh, the materials balance sheet. Just uh, Can I ask a question, please. Yes. So it seems that Did we you, have some questions. Yes, I was trying to get <laughs> trying to get into the chat, and it said it was disabled. Could you go back a couple screens? There was something about a percentage that I didn't understand. Yes. Um, yeah, the final, the uptake share. I didn't, I'm sorry, I didn't understand that. One second, uh, this yeah. here. Estimate share. Well, I'm sorry, I, 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 I must have missed something. What does that mean? So here when we talk about estimate share percentage, uh, if you don't know the exact uptake, like for example, like here, we ask uh, all of you to please provide an estimate share. So a share of, uh, for example, in this case, will be Better Code Initiative. So the share of your total cotton portfolio, because by having this share, we can uh, make better calculations. So will it be the share of Better Cotton Initiative uh, of the total cotton portfolio of your company. Of, okay, yeah. so it's either uptake or it's estimate share, it's not both. Exactly, yeah. Okay, I, okay. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Thank you very much. No, thank you so much for asking this question because uh, we that's super important. Uh, uptake is, of course, if you have the spe your, your exact number, that will be uptake. Uh, if you don't have it, we'll, you know, estimate share will be super helpful. What we will try, what we will love, you know, to companies to avoid is to not add anything here, otherwise we will get incomplete. So if you can even share with us an estimate share, that will be super helpful for the, all the calculations and of course the tools that we share with you. Perfect, thank you so much. Thank you so much. I don't know if there's any burning questions that you want to, someone wants to jump in. Otherwise we keep going and then we will have time at the end of the workshop. Okay, uh, so just to finalize this live demo, uh, I wanted to clarify one thing because I have just realized that maybe I went too quickly through that. So as I mentioned, uh, since you are retinees, one of the big benefits is that uh, brief, you have your answers pre-filled from last year. Uh, so you, you will see, that's uh, of course is a dummy company, uh, but you will see that uh, the pre-fill will be highlighted in blue boxes. So that means that uh, uh, your answers are safe from last year's survey. So if there are no changes, you don't need to make any changes and just save and continue. And if there are changes, just tap in here and you change the, yeah, the, the answer. Said that, uh, once you have completed all the sections, um, this is of course for an MCI full survey. That's why you are getting so many sections. You need to submit your survey. Mm, don't forget to uh, have the sign off of a senior manager that's you will also find it here and that's all uh, that's all for the survey and now let's move into uh, the benefits of the of the benchmark so i'm going to jump again to our slide deck um, so as a returnees of course you know the benefits uh, but just we want to uh, remind you what they are so here it is. So all of you, you know, by that by taking part of the benchmark, uh, you will get a confidential scorecard. Of course, confidential. So it's only for you. Uh, only you have access, uh, and you will access your scorecard in your portal, uh, just next to the survey. Uh, you will find a tab a name scorecard you click there and you will you, you will get your scorecard we have two different scorecards as you know we have uh, the standard one where you get already a good amount of data based on the benchmark option selected and the answers um, uh, that you got in your survey and then we have the advanced one so the advanced one uh, is one of the benefits of uh, the companies that are part of textile exchange and here you will get uh, some more data, like such, for example, the impacts and the outcomes. And then on top of the standard and advanced, uh, we have what we call the premium scorecard. Uh, that's not a scorecard as such. Uh, basically, our 
consultancy services that we are providing to you, uh, such, for example, you want to know uh, more about uh, a specific uh, area of your scorecard, so that's a service that we will deliver, or you want a gap analysis or ask to deliver a workshop to uh, your team. As you know, the confidential scorecard and based on our stakeholder consultation is a useful tool for as a, a useful tool for your team, but also as a way to communicate with other teams that maybe they're not so familiar uh, with all that. And also a useful tool to see how you are performing year on year uh, and how you can get better on all that. In the next slide, you will see, uh, well, you know how it looks like a uh, confidential scorecard, but just a, a high overview of how it looks here. Um, and here, the important things is to know that thanks to the confidential scorecard, uh, you can compare your, uh, your survey, so how you're performing year on year. But there are three levels of benchmark. So there's your company year on year, but also you can compare your company how it's doing at subsector level. So, you will also benchmark against your subsector, and also you will benchmark against the overall cohort. You will find here on, on the right this breakdown of your portfolio, and you can see also how uh, it's evolving. And every year we are trying to get uh, this uh, scorecard, make it like much more visual, much more understandable uh, for all of you. So that's why you will find this year like, more infographics, more visual, and hopefully more useful and helpful to all of you. But also, as you know, we have more tools uh, and also the insight report. As Haley, my colleague, mentioned at the beginning of the workshop, we just launched this insight report this Monday, so exciting week. But also, we have other material change uh, tools. So, by completing the benchmark, uh, besides the confidential scorecard, also you will be part of these tools. Uh, all of them that are part that in the in the public domain, uh, but we only use aggregated data. So I want to really stress that because it's very important. First, as you can see here on the left, we have our material change leaderboard. We say that is our rest to the top, is our name and fame. So you can see how your company is doing against other companies. Then we have our dashboard here. Uh, where the dashboard basically takes you through material by material to look into volumes and trends at the cohort level and each fiber type. Again, aggregated data. And finally, we have the sector scorecard. So sector scorecard is similar to your confidential scorecard, but again, aggregated data. So you will get an overview of the overall sector. Of course, it's important to communicate. We say that with what do we say what we don't measure, we don't know how we are doing, and what we don't communicate, uh, the rest of the world don't know don't know how what how we are doing. So here we have also uh, built for you some badges that uh, well, was already uh, last year, but this year we try to make it uh, more beautiful, aligned with our new branding. Uh, so we have all these tools uh, for you. Uh, you will find it uh, in our website. Um, use them, you know, for your sustainability report, uh, for in your social media. So basically, use them to, to celebrate this through your channels. Call to action. Uh, so as you know, we have uh, our hub, our uh, MCI hub. Uh, if you are not part of them, uh, please uh, join the hub. Here we're just. Well, we are building our community. Um, I think it's a, a nice way also to connect with us, to connect with all the companies, uh, suppliers, brands. Uh, if you have any questions, you know, don't be shy, drop your question. We are here to, to help you uh, and also other companies. I'm sure that when you have a question, uh, many, of, uh, many of other people will have a similar question. So join the hub. Also uh, check the survey as I showed you before in the in ProBench. You will find uh, all the guys also in our website. Um, and we have our drop-in clinics. Uh, we started with the drop-in clinics uh, a year ago. Uh, it was uh, an, you know, an exciting moment uh, for all of us to see how many companies were joining us. So please join again this year. Uh, it's also a nice way to connect with uh, other companies to see how they are doing, uh, how you can improve, of course, answer your questions. And that also will make your life easier when you need to fill out your survey. 
So here uh, we will share the slides with you, but also you have the links on how to join the drop-in clinics in the hub. And finally, uh, quickly, I'm going to uh, walk you through the benchmark cycle. It hasn't changed, it's the same. So we launched uh, the 2022 MCI survey for brands and retailers last week, the 21st of uh, June. Uh, and it's going to remain open until the first week of September, the 2nd of September. After that, we move to, into validation. Uh, it's not an audit, but we validate the answers that you are uh, submitting the survey and the evidences that you provide to us. And then we move to the third step, which is analysis. Here we have our data team that we work very closely with them that analyze all the data, prepare all the data to get ready to the launch, to the reporting uh, of the different material change index tools and insights reports that we just saw before. Every uh, year we do um, a review of the benchmark and every three years we undertake an in-depth uh, strategy review of the benchmark as what we are doing uh, this year and also next year. That's why the framework has changed, trying to accommodate and make uh, the survey better and of course help you to navigate better through the survey. And finally, we have the bench learning. Bench learning is all year round at the core of the, of the cycle because we want to create this community. We want to help you and also we want to learn from you. As I mentioned, this is uh, uh, well, the deadline until when you can submit the survey, uh, Friday 2nd of September 2022. Um, again, I want to emphasize that uh, we are here to help you and also to learn from you uh, that this is a travel, it's a journey, and it's not a destination. So we don't want to feel you that you feel alone. Uh, that's why we are going to organize uh, more. Well, we have the drop-in clinics, but also we are super keen to organize these kind of workshops and uh, enjoy this time with you. So I think now uh, we, are, we came to the end. Uh, it's time to, to the Q&A. So I'm going to move, come back to the video and see if we have any questions. Please uh, start dropping your question. If something is not clear, feel free to drop the question on the Q&A that we have. Also, my colleagues Haley uh, and Liesl are here to answer your questions. Thanks, Jesse. And I know Liesl's been answering some as we've gone. Oh, yeah. Maybe... yeah, I can see that. Yeah. Thank you so much. <laughs> She's been busy. Um, yeah. I guess just on some of the terminology. So we had a question. Is the business integration module, ugh, module the strategy module? So yes, essentially, yes, it's the terminology. And as Liesl says, um, I guess the, 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 the word business integration just works better within the new framework. Um, hmm. the, I, the other thing I think Jesse did mention is the suite of guides. So as we did, as we mentioned, there is an updated MBS guide, which um, material balance sheet guide, which I would uh, highly recommend reviewing. We have an updated survey guide and just to also answer someone's question about if they can see the full question set, the survey guide actually contains the full survey question. So it is a very good point of reference along with the guidance of what we're looking for um, and why that question is important. In addition, we have a slightly updated biodiversity uh, guide, which for the fashion pact and those who wish to obviously complete the biodiversity, I would use as a, as a tool. Um, and there is a full suite of guides still available on our website. Um, and also, as Jesse mentioned, they're also fully embedded into the Pro Bench platform. Um, oh, we have another. Oh, Liesl's answered it, but oh, the pictures. Yeah, so where can we find the nice pictures to use in our reports? Um, and we will share it with everybody, but we actually, with the launch, um, of the scorecards, we put together a communications kit, which um, all participants uh, should should have received a link, um, but we can uh, reshare that with everybody who would like that. I've just reshared that in the answer. Oh, you did? Thank you. There, Hayley. <laughs> There's a very good question um, that you might want to take a little bit of time to talk about, and that's um, about who asked the question. I thought it was, a, 
interesting one from um, Ellen. Yeah, which which was about, you know, can we look at some of the modules and have a, you know, quote unquote, my words, not hers, but a play around in the survey before submitting or before deciding to submit. I wondered if you wanted to elaborate a bit on, on that. Yeah, that is definitely an option. I don't know whether hmm, putting Jesse under pressure and um, we could show you how to look at that. But as I said, all of the questions are certainly in the survey guide. Um, if we go back to ProBench, Jesse, sorry, just to show how we can, oh, yeah. can have a look at the questions um, on the platform. Mm. So here, so as Jesse selects, she selected, um, this is the four MCI. So if you click now on business integration, Jesse, you'll see these are the four questions. And the first thing to unlock all of the questions is to go into say business integration. So I don't know, you're in? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and at the top of each of the modules, you will get this prompt, would you like to complete? So if you would like to unlock and see all of the questions, you just need to make sure that that says yes, and then save and continue. So now if you go back to the overview, what you will see is that section has been unlocked and the progress has is that you haven't started. If you do look through the questions and you know decide not to maybe complete the business integration, all you will need to do is go back to um, the first part. So S, oh no, sorry, Jesse, business integration, S01, uh, that one, yeah. And then just say no and just save and continue. And then that takes away the question set. Did that help? Did that confuse more? But and also the guides are a really good reference point because all of the questions that we have on ProBench are also in the guides. Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't have my camera on. Apologies. Um, was there? Let me check if there's any other questions. Okay, I think very busy. quiet. <laughs> I don't see any other questions. No, I mean, yeah, there's no more questions for the moment. Um, tell us if there is something that was not clear enough or if you, that maybe you want to deep dive in certain section or certain area of the benchmark. So we have time today to go through it. So yeah, we're very efficient, Jesse, <laughs> or quick. It's very quiet. Yeah. There was a question that uh, yeah, just question, I think. Thank you so much for asking. Oh. Yeah, good question. Um <laughs> about the server guide. Um sorry for first for sorry for the delay on that. We have been adjusting some things. We wanted to ensure that the guy was fully uh, completed and clear enough this year for all of you. Uh, so by the end of this week, which means tomorrow will be on the, will be live. So updated here in the portal and the website and in the hub everywhere. But uh, also just to uh, remember you that you have the guidance embedded in ProBench. So, it, these guidance are taken from the guide, but of course the guide provides you with further information. Oh, okay. Three, oh no. Uh, is that the... Same question, the survey guide. Yeah, I think we've answered yeah. that one. The answer, so yeah. Question. Yeah. yeah, there's there's a question from, from Natalie, which I think is, oh. I'll put my camera on, which is a really um, <laughs> very topical question at the moment, Natalie, because as 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 you as you probably know, there's the option to um, submit a survey on behalf for holding companies to submit a survey on behalf of their entire or a subset of their subsidiaries. And as long as that's disclosed 
in the in the business um, overview, the company overview, then we accommodate, you know, that with, and, and then we report that out within the leaderboard to show what the submission covers. Um, but of course, we're getting different companies take different approaches, and we've been very open and accommodating of that. Um, so we've had you know, companies such as Caring that will round up their, their submission. They have very centralized sourcing systems and that sort of thing. So we, and then there'll be other companies um, like VF who have done an amazing job, a different sort of job, and their individual subsidiaries are putting in their own um, submissions each year. We're experimenting with them. I don't think they'd mind me saying in, in how to make that efficient from their side and our side so that... Um, the companies will, I mean, we've got Anne on the call, um, will get their, their own result um, that they can then sort of use in various ways within, within in this case, VF. So it's early days and a, and a lovely piece of consultation work that we would like to do with everybody. And I, I think it's really important to, to understand the different needs that, that you guys have as, as either you know subsidiaries or holding companies or um, to figure out how best to get you know a that sort of flexibility and um, opportunities within within what companies need and then for us to be able to be sort of fair and consistent and and sort of even-handed with the way we um, way we review and and you know use our methodology to get to the results so and I don't think there is any compromise with that. I'm, I'm just saying we're looking at all the different um, aspects of this question. Um, we know the SAC is as well. So, you know, this is something where we're sort of doing a little bit of, um, you know, community um, exchange to understand what, what would work best and what would be most, um, you know, what, what do I, what a customer, what are customers, what are the, the brands, um, like to to use so welcome any any feedback on that um and to get oh, sorry and just to sort of get to the crux of your question about um fiber uptake for different brands that's definitely something that we're looking at expanding at the moment it is possible of course through the um and jesse might have might have to scroll down the page we have a um a file uptake down up upload functionality at the bottom of of most pages where there's yeah I think maybe not the balance sheet but um or it will be at the balance sheet sorry um so you can so you can actually submit data for different brands and as I said depending on how you're um submitting your overall survey if it's by holding company level um at the moment that requires you to to aggregate that data that's right isn't it jesse i know we're very much have that all under discussion with the functionality to yeah. Yeah. divide data yeah but we have that uh functionality as you mentioned uh lisa of uploading that file uh is just loading now but it should be what well, should be it's in bs5 uptake calculation metadata yeah yeah, very good question, and certainly something that we're we're looking at, at. As I said, sort of being able to accommodate different different layers and granulation of of surveys. So keep those sorts of requests and questions coming. I know we had one earlier about being able to download um, the survey into an Excel. These things sort of sound quite simple, don't they? Um, and, and we have got the functionality to download into, into a Word document. So as you complete the survey, or even if it's incomplete, um, you know, you'll be able to download at, at various points to, to and, and at the very end, of course, to see your completed set of answers. Um, but we haven't got that lovely functionality that I think uh, whoever it was that we were talking about on, on the Q&A um, to be able to like put answers into an Excel or a CSV and then kind of repopulate the online version. We, we're not able to do that yet, um, but technology is improving all the time. And if, if there's strong requests and, um, and we can accommodate within development cycles, then yeah, we're fully, fully open to hearing some of some of your your needs and how we can make life easier. 
Thank you so much. Ah, three more questions, I guess. <laughs> I'll give them to you. I've just seen that Natalie has elaborated on, on further on her question, Liz, was saying that uh, if, if it's possible to get a separate score car, so a score car by brand. Yeah, and that, and that, that was, sorry, I was, jump, I was sort of moving quite quickly through that, um, that explanation. Um, at the moment, within the, the current setup of the program, if the brands can put in individual um, submissions, so register under the brand name, um, and for example, if you were just wanting to track, you know, their materials uptake, progress and not the entire benchmark then that I would hope would be relatively straightforward for each of each of your brands to register select the material um, tracker into into the data and then the system generates you know a confidential digital scorecard for each of those registered brands um, that's really the most efficient way in the way we've kind of got the system set up for those scorecards to be generated. Um, if you wanted to customize and do anything different, um, we'd probably, we'd have to talk about what exactly it is that, that you're, you're looking for. But we certainly know through some of our um, end, of, end of cycle interviews and things that, you know, there's, there's lots of really exciting opportunities that, that some of you are looking at, like being able to compare data with a select number of companies to so be able to mix and match a little bit, you know, pro, um, forecast and predictive modeling. If you changed your, you know, your, your um, material portfolio around, you know, what would that look like in terms of impact and that sort of thing. It's, you know, it's the sort of things that we see, we see coming and, and certainly interested in having that conversation. Um, it does require, obviously, significant investment, um, you know, technical planning and stuff like that. But we know how exciting it is with, with the future of this digital report generation that we have. I hope that answered your question and we can circle back to that just ping Jesse. <laughs> ping the CFMB uh, at textileexchange.org and we will sorry we say we hand everything to Jesse at the moment it's a little bit of an internal joke <laughs> that only I'm laughing at. <laughs> I can see that we have another good question from Jessica one I'm talking about Jessica's uh, what's the difference between the materials balance sheet and material models? Yeah, no, I was just handing it over to you. Oh, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> um, so actually, I'm going to use Liesl's uh, phrase, the materials balance sheet is the accounting for all of the numbers that relate to the materials. And then the materials module. So Jesse, because we selected cotton, cotton should be now showing, hopefully. So again, we select yes, and essentially the, oh, you could, might, might've been able to stay on that back screen actually, Jess. Uh, sorry, I'm not, cannot, can you see ProBench? Yeah, go back to the overview page. Uh, okay. So. And then cotton, just to show. So the materials balance sheet is where we ask for all of the numbers, all of the data to your uptake in your portfolio. In the cotton, uh, in the material modules, the cotton portfolio, we ask different questions. So if you just select the cotton, Jesse, and show the question sets. Cotton? Yeah, yeah, one second. Um, okay. <laughs> I think my, right now my, uh, yeah. There we go. So we ask risk management, transparency, and target. So that will complete all of the information that we need for your cotton portfolio. Does that, help um oh the question's gone no. hopefully that's clear but essentially all of the numbers go in the material balance sheet and then some additional questions around your risk management your transparency and your targets that goes in the material modules and that's a slight change actually um, for those who are familiar you'll notice that the, the material modules are a little bit shorter and that's because 
to make it, I guess, a user more uh, a more user friendly experience, we have moved those more number um, related questions into the material balance sheets. So there is actually less questions now in the material modules, <laughs> which is good, I guess. I, I, I think I'll take this opportunity to just very quickly add on that, that um, under in an ideal state, um, the company, your company would complete the materials balance sheet to your full portfolio use, at least your, you know, your, your main materials that we, we have available in the material balance sheet. Obviously, once you start to get into some of the more, more minority fibers, traditionally anyway, um, it's, it, it does taper off, but we do have very explicit, yeah, as Jesse's showing. Um, so our request would be for you to complete this to its fullest extent. That gives you as a company that, that holistic and comprehensive overview of your materials portfolio and all the, the lovely breakdown of data that we can show you in your, in your uh, scorecard and the trend, et cetera, of different materials, different preferred materials, et cetera. Um, and then, of course, if you want to re complete that more extensive fiber module that, that Haley was just explaining with the, the risk and management and transparency questions, that sort of thing, that will give you a, a, a full um, fiber or material module score. Um, but you don't, if, but I guess the, the point I'm trying to make is you don't need to match every fiber volume that you put into the materials balance sheet with a fully fledged <laughs> um, material module um, com completed. Um, so yeah, that didn't come out as smoothly as it came out in my brain, but the materials balance sheet, full comprehensive data set, and then identify which material modules that you want to do the full management questions on. Is that clearer? <laughs> The other advantage, the selfish advantage, I, I guess, for, for us and ideally for the, I mean, essentially for the industry is if you can complete your materials balance sheet, it means we can then aggregate those volumes and get a, get a sense for you ultimately of how the sector is doing overall compared to say, if you just gave us your polyester result or your cotton result or your wool result, we can't really do a lot with, we can't do anything with that data in terms of aggregating it into the full sector, um, you know, portfolio of use, if that makes sense. Back to you, Jess. Thank you so much, Liesl. I'm checking the Q&A for the moment. We don't have more questions. Um, I don't know if someone else wants to ask anything. We still have time, plenty of time, in fact. So otherwise, uh, as you know, as we mentioned, we have to have the materials chain in the hub that we are building. Uh, well, plenty of you are already in the hub. So this is really nice to see. But if you have any questions, please drop them in the hub. Also, you can ask them uh, via email. But we really are trying to build the, this community and also Q&A &A section in the hub. Um, because as I, as I said before, if you have a question, I'm sure that someone else will have the same question. So also we are trying to help each other and also trying also from our side to learn from you. Um, so I'm not seeing more questions. I don't know if uh, Liz or Haley, uh, you want to add anything else? Nothing specific from my side, but again, we do appreciate it might look different, but just to reassure you, the questions haven't changed. And the pre-fill is that advantage for you guys as a returnee. But if you do come into any sort of challenges or problems, please just don't hesitate to reach out to us as a team. And as Jesse said, we really are here to support you um, in any way that we can. Um, and I think the drop-in sessions are going to be a great way to interact with other participants as well. Um, so please do join those and yeah, feel free to reach out to us. And Thank you so much, Heidi. Lisa, I don't know if there is anything uh, else to add. Otherwise, I think we can 
finalize the workshop. <laughs> There's always more to add, but I, I think that was that was great. And if every, everything's clear and clean, you guys are our our leaders, our, our future shapers. So thank you for coming in and getting a refresh. I hope it was super helpful and we look forward to, yeah, this round of the, the program with you. Thank you to our speakers and thank you for participating in today's webinar. As a friendly reminder, an email will be sent to all registered participants with a link to today's presentation. Also, be sure to go to the hub to continue the discussion and asking of questions. That concludes our webinar. Thank you. Goodbye.